Hello friends, welcome back to the library. It's April and April is National Poetry Month. What I really like about poetry is that it can be about anything. It can be about big things or small things. It can be fiction or it can be nonfiction. It can be about important things. It can be about silly things. And I want to share the story of Emma's poem. And it tells the story of how this poem changed the Statue of Liberty from just a gift from the uh, country of France to a symbol for, of welcome to immigrants. So here we go. Emma's poem, The Voice of the Statue of Liberty by Linda Glasser. To the immigrants then and now. When Emma was a little girl, she had plenty of everything, plenty of pretty dresses, plenty of good food, and plenty of love from her family. She lived in a large, comfortable house in New York City with her mother and father and her sisters and brothers. She loved to read, and she had plenty of books. She loved to write, and she had plenty of time to create stories and poems. All the people Emma knew had plenty of good food and fine clothes. They had plenty of everything. Even when Emma was all grown up, and by then a well-known writer, she still only knew people who had plenty of everything. But one day, Emma visited Ward's Island in New York Harbor. There, she met very poor immigrants whom she had only heard about. They had traveled a long way across the ocean by boat. They wore ragged clothing and looked tired and sad. Some were sick. All of them were hungry. They were the poorest people Emma had ever seen. Her heart hurt to see them. They were Jews like Emma. Some were well-educated like Emma, but they had been treated very badly in Eastern Europe. Their homes had been burned. Friends and relatives had been killed. They had made the long, hard journey to America, hoping for a better life. Emma felt she must help them. At that time in the 1880s, people believed that a fine lady like Emma should not mingle with poor people. But Emma often visited the immigrants. She helped them learn English and get training for jobs. In time, she made friends with many of them. Emma knew that in her own city, many people did not care about the immigrants. People said they were so ragged and poor that ruin the country. In those days, women kept their thoughts quiet. But Emma wrote about the immigrants for the newspaper and in poems. She told with great feeling how badly they needed help. She explained with help they'd give back to the country. Most people read her writing. Some began to care, but still many did not. One day, Emma heard about a statue being constructed in France as a gift of friendship for the United States. It was meant to show the great love of liberty that both countries shared. The statue was huge, 151 feet tall. The arm holding the torch was 42 feet long. The statue would be erected right in New York Harbor. But first, money was needed to build a very large pedestal for the statue to stand on. To raise money, many well-known American writers, such as Mark Twain and Walt Whitman, were asked to write something. Emma was asked to create a poem. The whole collection would be sold to help pay for the statue's pedestal. Emma Lazarus always wrote what she cared about. Now she thought hard. What did she want to say? At the time, the Statue of Liberty had nothing to do with immigrants, but Emma knew that immigrants would see the huge woman when their boats arrived in New York Harbor. Wouldn't they wonder why she was there? What might they think? What might they hope? And what if the statue were a real live woman? What might she think when she saw immigrants arriving hungry and in rags? What might she feel? And Emma pondered, what would the statue say if she could actually speak? Emma took up her pen and began to write. Emma's poem was the only one read at the large celebration in 1883 to raise money for the pedestal. Those listening heard a powerful new voice speak up for the immigrants. In the last 
few lines of Emma's poem, they heard the huge statue send out a welcome to immigrants and boldly tell the world, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Three years later, in 1886, when enough money had been raised, the statue was packed into 214 crates, shipped across the Atlantic Ocean, and erected in New York Harbor on top of the pedestal. Although, sadly, Emma did not live to see the statue erected, she knew that her poem helped buy the pedestal for it. She also knew that her poem gave the huge woman a strong and caring voice but she did not know that in the years to come, her poem would do much more. Slowly, over time, Emma's poem stirred the hearts and minds of people around the nation. 20 years after Emma wrote it, a friend had the poem engraved on a plaque and placed it inside the entrance to the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty for all visitors to see. 30 years after that, Emma's poem was printed in school textbooks and children around the country learned to recite it. Then, more than 60 years after Emma wrote her poem, the last five lines of it, the statue's bold words were set to music by the famous songwriter Irving Berlin and sung on Broadway. Soon, school children around the country were singing, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Now the huge statue was much more than a gift of friendship from France to the United States. Because of Emma's poem, the Statue of Liberty had become the mother of immigrants, and her torch was a lamp held out to welcome them. Today, Emma's poem is so well known that when people look at the Statue of Liberty, they can almost hear her speaking, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore, send these, the homeless tempest toast to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. The end. So that is the true story of Emma's poem, The Voice of the Statue of Liberty. I hope you enjoyed learning about it. Um, I hope you learned that poetry can change things. And I hope in the month of April, you take a moment or two to read a poem or share a poem or even as we did last year, keep a poem in your pocket. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.